It feels like a lot of games lack ambition these days, or at least have their most creative ideas sanded down into something safer and easier to sell to a focus group by the time they arrive at our thumbsticks. Princess Peach Showtime, to its credit, is definitely highly ambitious, offering 10 distinct playstyles for Peach that go beyond just wearing a new costume. Unfortunately, it sacrifices depth for width and ends up being only okay despite flashes of, if not brilliance, then at least a much stronger game. Showtime is Princess Peach's second solo outing, and the biggest criticism of her first game, Super Princess Peach, is that it pigeonholes her. The whole game is built around her emotions, and it's often pointed out that this reduces Peach, and by extension all female characters, into stereotypes. Showtime is a rebellion against that, shifting Peach out of the damsel in distress, elegant flower that she was originally designed as, and into far more exciting roles. You have Swordfighter Peach and Kung Fu Peach, who embrace a more classic and aggressive combat gameplay, but Showtime is not an overcorrection, celebrating Peach's femininity through Figure Skater Peach and Mermaid Peach as well. While no outfit is terrible, there are a few too many. Some play almost identically, while others take up rooms other costumes could have had. The best ones grow in challenge and complexity across their three outings, but a handful never get out of first gear. And by the way, if I could cut just one, it would be Dashing Thief Peach. Despite the name, she steals nothing, instead solving crimes by sneaking around, which makes her part detective and part ninja. Both of which already have costumes in the game. As a result of these options, a third of the game's levels are a little more than tutorials, which makes them feel like dead weight. This feeling only worsens when the boring ones return, and you know the game is capable of so much better. A whole game of, say, Cowgirl Peach, Swordfighter Peach, or even Figure Skater Peach could have brought Showtime up to Luigi's Mansion levels. Instead, it feels more like Detective Pikachu with how little challenge it offers. Of course, saying I loved three of these outfits is better than finding them all wanting, and Patisserie, Ninja and Kung Fu all do enough to pass the bar too, but that does leave four, Detective, Mermaid, Mighty and Dashing Thief, that for me were little more than filler. And the thing is, I actually wouldn't mind which four or five you cut to expand the rest. Even something like Dashing Thief has potential, as long as you pretend its name is Thief Catcher Peach. It's more that there just isn't enough time dedicated to any of these outfits, which make you resent the ones that don't offer much to begin with. Those that do excel do so thanks to an array of interesting gameplay choices. While the levels are linear, and each only take around 10 minutes to beat, every costume tries something new. Swordfighter might be mostly combat, but it's the only outfit in the game with a dodge mechanic giving greater emphasis on timing in those battles. Meanwhile, Tisserie Peach is combat free, and to win you need to complete Cooking Mama style challenges like icing cake in the correct pan before you're out of time. And not to keep going on about it, but we never see the best in any of these mechanics because of the game's ease. However, you have to say the range, at least, is not phoned in. As you might expect for a game in the Super Mario universe, there's not much of a story here. I mean, even the movie isn't about it. Okay. Now you die. However, the central conceit is more inventive. Peach is at a theatre when an evil invader, Madame Grape, arrives and destroys everything. The reason Peach wears these costumes is because she goes into these plays to save each story, but the game is jarringly inconsistent with how this idea impacts things. At times, it fully embraces the theatrical, like having Cowgirl Peach ride a horse that is very clearly a wooden puppet on strings. When the sets look like they're from a mid-budget drama club, it gives the game a strong sense of identity. However, at other times, it completely abandons this idea. Detective Peach climbs a real clock tower with active machinery and a real flowing river outside. While Mermaid Peach takes place entirely underwater, where Peach controls real fish. The strangest thing about this is, some of the sea life in Mermaid Peach are still props, but most are not, and that gives the levels a little bit of a chaotic vibe, and not in a good way. Ultimately, Princess Peach Showtime is very approachable and tries a lot of different new ideas, which makes it perfect for extremely casual players or a younger audience. It's just a shame it doesn't capture the kids of all ages feeling of Mario's Adventures or, as I said before, Luigi's Mansion. 
It feels more like Yoshi's Crafted World with its ease, which makes a lot of sense since both games were developed by Goodfeel. Although it's a significant step up from Super Princess Peach, Princess Peach Showtime tries a little too much, and that means its best performances are overshadowed by discordant notes from the understudies.